morning and welcome to our service this morning. I'm Pastor Ron Peterson, a retired ELS pastor, and I will be uh, filling in uh, this morning. Uh, we begin with our opening hymn, and the last verse uh, we will uh, stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart 
and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. given his only son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. God, you have filled us with the new light of the Word, who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all that we do, 
through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this Sunday is taken from Isaiah, the 50th chapter, and beginning with verse 4. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spinning. <coughs> because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me, who will condemn me, they will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. So far the Old Testament reading. The epistle reading is taken from Hebrews, the second chapter, and beginning with verse 10. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. <clears throat> so Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made, like, be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of all the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Here ends the epistle lesson. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is taken from St. Luke, the second chapter, and beginning with verse 41, please rise. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, he went up to the festival according to to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it, thinking he was in their company. 
They traveled on for days. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Did you not know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Jerusalem with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Here ends the gospel. We confess our faith in the words of the Christmas creed as it is printed in your bulletin. I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty who sent his Son to be my Savior. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, my Lord, the long-promised Messiah, who came as foretold, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, announced by the angels, worshipped by the shepherds, and adored by the wise men. He grew in wisdom and stature, saying that
mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, <coughs> Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon is our gospel reading for today, and I'll, I'll read it once again. This time, uh, I'll read it from the uh, uh, EHV, uh, the New Wells Translation. So please rise. So Luke, the second chapter, beginning with verse 41. Every year his parents traveled to Jerusalem for the feast, for the Passover festival. When he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom of the festival. When the days had ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know him. Since they thought he was in their group, they went a day's journey. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us this way? Uh, see, your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. He said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be taking care of my father's business? They did not understand what he was telling them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth. He was always obedient to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed, the Bible doesn't tell us much about Jesus' childhood. Most of what we know is around the time of his birth and the next year or so that followed. And then there's an 11 year gap. The next time we hear about Jesus is the incident in our text when he was 12. There is, of course, the Apocrypha which has gained new interest in recent years. In it are dozens of made-up stories that are written mostly in the first century after Christ. And some of them tell stories of the boy Jesus performing miracles while he was playing with his friends. Much of the Apocrypha was written by false teachers at the time called the Gnostics. And so the early church consuls rejected these writings. And God the Holy Spirit directed them uh, when they chose which books would be included in the New Testament. Not much is said in the Bible about Jesus' childhood after his birth. But in our text, we have this story of Jesus when he was 12 years old. And not only do we get some insight about Jesus, we also learn some things about his mother, Mary, and stepfather, Joseph. After they attended the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem, Mary and Joseph were on their way home. When all of a sudden they noticed that Jesus was missing. All of a sudden they had one big question on their minds. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? That was the question on Mary's mind that day. But she forgot to consider a very important truth. 
For the boy was also the son of God. I'm sure she knew it in theory. She must have remembered the shepherds telling her of the angels' announcements while they were watching their flocks by night. Luke tells us that Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And how could she forget the words of Simeon, who took Jesus in his arms and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. For the moment, at least, Mary had forgotten who her son really was. When she finally found Jesus in the temple, she said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And then Jesus said to her, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know I must be taking care of my father's business? Mary learned a very important lesson that day. She learned that God's word is true. She learned that God's word spoken to her by the shepherds and Simeon and others were still true. She learned that Jesus' real home was not with her and Joseph, but in his father's house, taking care of his business, proclaiming and explaining the scriptures. She had a lot to ponder once again as they all went home that day. Our text says, then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. You and I know all about Jesus too. Most of us have learned it at a young age. We know that he is the son of man, son of God. We know that he is true God and true man in one person. We know that in him we have the forgiveness of all of our sins. We have also learned that he is the Lord and ruler of the universe and able to help us in all of our needs. But when the trials of life come, like Mary, sometimes we lose sight of who Jesus really is and what he has come to do for us. When we're tested, we might wonder where Jesus is, too. We call out to him in prayer. Nothing seems to change. Where is Jesus now, we ask. We throw up our hands and we run here and there, seeking help and answers from our friends and relatives. But they don't give us any help. And then we finally find him doing his father's business, proclaiming and teaching, teaching us his word. Did you not know, Jesus said to Mary. And like Mary, we knew it, too. We have been taught all about Jesus. Like Mary, we could have answered all the questions right. But it took difficult times for his word to crystallize in our hearts. Like Mary, it took a hardship to make us really treasure his words in our hearts and ponder them anew. 
those wonderful words of scripture that we knew so well take on a new meaning. Words like, cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Did you not know, Jesus says to us, did you not know that I told you in my word, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And the psalmist says, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Our friends and relatives are a wonderful blessing from God. And God can use them to help us in times of trial, too. Paul says in Galatians, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. It certainly was not wrong or sinful for Mary to seek answers from her relatives and friends, but it can be for us. When we rely on their advice and consolation ahead of God, our friends and relatives cannot always help us either. Our real help is found not in man, but with Jesus and his word. The prophet Jeremiah writes, Cursed is a man who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. When we lose sight of Jesus, we will find him only in his word and sacrament, there waiting for us to doing his father's business. He is there ready and willing to forgive us all our sins. He is there in his word doing his father's business, waiting to proclaim to us the forgiveness of all of our sins. For in his word we learn anew every day how Jesus suffered and died on the cross for all our sins. We learn in his word how God made him who had no sin be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And yes, we learn in his word that in Jesus we have the forgiveness of every single one of our sins. For as St. Paul says in Ephesians, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches his grace. And he offers us that forgiveness as a free gift to claim by faith alone. And then too we learn in his word that he can help us with all of our troubles and work all things out for our good. Where is Jesus? At the age of 12, Jesus taught a very important lesson to Mary and to us, too. He was not found among his friends and relatives, but in his father's house, doing his father's business, explaining the scriptures. And that's where Jesus is 
today who is still doing his father's business, proclaiming and explaining the scriptures through us, through his word and sacrament. May God grant it to all of us, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Uh, at this time, uh, you'd normally take up the offering. I believe you put it in place in the back, and so you can uh, you can read the uh, the bulletin announcement there for that. Uh, we continue then with the sacrament. Please rise. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good right and right that we should at all times and in all places give thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the wonder and mystery of his birth, uh, you have opened our eyes to the glory of your grace and renewed in our hearts the fervor of your love. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and release from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Holy Spirit. Unite us as one and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my body of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness, you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him, you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing the last hymn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our service uh, this morning. As I said, I'm uh, ELS, retired ELS Pastor Ron Peterson, lived here in Mankato. So nice to be here and uh, serve you uh, here today and uh, Friday as well. I don't have any announcements, so I see you have a newsletter, so you can uh, uh, look through that um, for the announcements. Uh, we have one announcement here. Oh. I have an announcement for you. <laughs> Risen Savior had that challenge gift of uh, $12,000. I want to tell everybody that we actually made the $12,000. We made about $13,000. So we did apply $25,000 directly to the principal on our loan to the school building. We want to thank all of you for as well. Please take note on the back that there are several call meetings coming up. Today we have Risen Savior at 2. 
And then we have on Tuesday, we have JLM's call meeting. And then we have on the 16th, we have our lead pastor call meeting. So please take note of all the call meetings. There are a lot of them going on. We have a lot of holes to fill within our ministry. So praise the Lord for all the work he's been doing here at St. Paul's. Thank you, and thank you, Pastor. So with that, may the peace of Christ be with you all until we meet again.